In the world of modern warfare, precision, power, and strategy go hand in hand. One of the most fascinating and formidable tools in a military's arsenal is the Bunker Buster Bomb. Unlike conventional bombs that explode on impact or above the ground, Bunker Busters are designed for one very specific mission, penetrating deep into fortified underground structures before detonating. These highly specialized weapons are engineered to destroy command bunkers, underground weapons factories, missile silos, and other hardened facilities that are shielded from traditional aerial attacks. But what makes a Bunker Buster so different, and how exactly do they work? Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. To understand Bunker Busters, it's essential to first grasp the challenge they're designed to overcome. During conflicts, enemy leaders and high-value assets often retreat to heavily reinforced shelters buried deep underground. These bunkers may be protected by thick layers of concrete, steel, and earth, sometimes buried dozens or even hundreds of feet below the surface. Standard bombs, even powerful ones, usually detonate upon impact or just before hitting the ground, making them ineffective against these subterranean targets. Enter the Bunker Buster, a weapon built not to explode on contact, but to pierce through those layers like a hammer through drywall. At their core, Bunker Buster bombs are about two things, penetration and delayed detonation. These weapons are typically made with hardened steel casings that allow them to withstand the enormous stress of slamming into the ground at high speeds. The casing isn't just tough, it's designed to remain intact as the bomb drills its way downward. Most bunker busters are equipped with a delayed fuse, which ensures the explosion doesn't happen until the bomb has reached the right depth inside the target structure. Timing is everything. If the explosion happens too early, it won't reach the vital parts of the bunker. Too late, and it may blow past the target entirely. One of the most well-known Bunker Buster bombs is the GBU-28, developed by the United States during the Gulf War in 1991. With intelligence suggesting that Saddam Hussein's military command centers were located in heavily fortified underground bunkers, the U.S. Air Force needed a bomb that could punch through meters of reinforced concrete. The GBU-28 was developed in record time, just a few weeks, and used a four 700-pound shell designed from surplus artillery barrels. It proved so effective that it became a benchmark for future bunker buster designs. Then there's the Massive Ordnance Penetrator, or MOP, one of the largest conventional bombs in existence. Weighing in at a staggering 30,000 pounds, the MOP is capable of penetrating 200 feet of earth or 60 feet of concrete before detonating. It's specifically designed for use against extremely deep or well-protected facilities, such as nuclear weapons sites or deeply buried military headquarters. Unlike nuclear bombs, bunker busters like the MOP use conventional explosives, but their destructive power comes from their ability to concentrate that explosion exactly where it counts, inside the target structure. How do these bombs achieve such incredible penetration? It's a combination of mass, speed, and smart engineering. When dropped from high altitudes, Bunker Busters can reach supersonic speeds as they descend. This velocity, combined with their dense, narrow design, allows them to act like a giant bullet or drill. Some modern versions even come with rocket assist capabilities to drive them faster and deeper into the ground. In addition, the fuses used in these bombs can be adjusted depending on the mission, some set to go off after a certain amount of time others triggered by sensing the type of material they've passed through.
However, deploying bunker busters isn't without its challenges or controversies. For one, they require precise intelligence. You have to know exactly where the underground target is located, how deep it is, and how it's constructed. Without that information, even a successful penetration might not yield the desired results. Moreover, the massive impact of these bombs can create shockwaves and secondary explosions that affect surrounding areas. That's why their use is typically limited to high-stakes scenarios where the risk of collateral damage is deemed acceptable in light of the military objective. There's also a political dimension. Using bunker busters against certain targets, especially if suspected of housing weapons of mass destruction, can escalate tensions quickly. For instance, the idea of using bunker busters against Iranian nuclear facilities has been a topic of heated debate in international politics. These facilities are believed to be buried under mountains or reinforced with thick concrete layers, making them ideal candidates for this type of strike. But such a move would have enormous geopolitical consequences. Interestingly, the evolution of bunker busters has also sparked a kind of arms race in bunker construction. As bombs get better at penetrating, militaries around the world have responded by building deeper and more fortified structures. Some bunkers are constructed with layers of sand, concrete, and steel, each designed to absorb different aspects of an incoming blast. Others are built into mountains or shielded with shock-absorbing materials. It's a constant game of cat and mouse, with each side trying to outsmart the other through engineering. In the end, bunker buster bombs represent the intersection of physics, engineering, and strategy. They're not just powerful tools of destruction, they're also examples of how science is applied to solve complex military problems. While their use is relatively rare compared to other types of munitions, their role in modern warfare is undeniable. In situations where traditional bombs fall short, bunker busters step in to get the job done, piercing deep, striking hard, and ensuring that no place is truly safe from the reach of modern air power. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.